Dion Williamson is trying to turn himself into a 6-5-6-6 Nigerian freak Giannis Antetokounmpo. And it's working. I just don't know what to expect from that long term. It is a very interesting transition where if you look at him when he's been healthy, which has always been a thing, right? But when he's been healthy, he was thought of to be a guy that can take you outside, shoot the shot, maybe take a three or at least a top, top of the key J, take you off the dribble, take you in the post. Like he was thought of a triple threat player, right? He can score from all levels. Well, I don't know what's gotten into him. He's thrown that out the window. He has clearly just decided, I'm just going to be a 6'6 Giannis. I'm just going to bully ball people. I'm going to be running with a full head of steam on the break. They give him the rock, and it's a clear out. It's a clear out. It's almost like one four flat, but it's always on the baseline. So, so it's, like, it's like the opposite of a one four flat or four corners. It's very weird, but they give him the rock, and he starts at the three-point line. And people are backing up because they're giving him the shot, but he's not taking the shot. It's almost a cross between he's playing like the Nigerian freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo, from a couple of years ago. And he's also playing a little bit like Ben Simmons, where I'm only going to get my shots in the paint. I'm not shooting no jumper. I'm not shooting no three. Like, he'll do it occasionally, but the bulk of his points... And we can... Let, let's go ahead and go to the screen share here. I will share my screen for those on the YouTube side. So if you're on YouTube, you see this is a whole lot of shots, bruh, within the paint. Like, he's made one three the entire season from the left side of the court. One three. He's only attempted one three, and he made that one three. He's only attempted, he's attempted no corner threes. He's attempted only a handful of threes the entire season. If you're looking at this um, shot chart, that basketball reference has up here. This is a great tool, by the way, because this kind of tells you everything you need to know. Everything is from the dotted circle and below. Everything is from the dotted circle and below. So this is like not even 10 feet. This is below 10 feet from the bucket. The key is that's not where he's getting the ball. That's just where he ends up. He's getting the ball at the three-point line where he's only attempted and made the one from the left side. He's only attempted one three, but that's where he's receiving the ball the majority of the time, but yet and still, he's ending up under 10 feet from the cup. How is that happening where this guy, who is a, is a beast of a player, right? Physically is a specimen, a specimen most of us have not seen. That's why he was such a freak in nature and why the hype train went overdrive in regards to him being the number one pick over a player who I still is fundamentally better in John Morant. So what we have here in Zion is that he has just decided no one can physically match up with me, so I'm just going to explode that, exploit that over and over. It's like that Marshawn Lynch clip. It just, I'm just going to keep being you over and over and over and over. That's what he's doing. He's seen the blueprint. Giannis, the Nigerian freak, Antetokounmpo, gave him the blueprint, and Giannis is, and uh, Zion is following it. And this is something where, you know, this, to me, this player is not the player he was supposed to be. The player that they were projecting him to be was like this hybrid big that can take you outside and all this stuff. That's clearly not him. This man is, you know, we're going to go up here to his shot type. He has attempted 55 jump shots the entire season. 55 jump shots. Shots from under 10 feet, 117. Shots at the rim, 224. This man is refusing to take shots from anywhere besides the paint. And I don't blame him. I do not blame him. Why would you do that? If you're if you're only if your athleticism at its peak is the fact that you're undersized, yet you have this heft of muscle and you still have the ability to have that quick first jump, especially off putbacks. He has that that still has that burst. Even after all these injuries, even after all the weight concerns. He still has the ability to just get that put back, that offensive rebound put back. He just has that quick step, that quick. He still has the fast twitch muscles are still popping despite his diet, right? So these numbers are insane. They just jump out at you where 
He has, you know, 59 dunk attempts compared to 55 jump shots. He almost has as many dunks as jump shots. And that tells you what his game is about. He's got 251 layups. So again, he is killing it at the rim. Now, how does this project going forward? That's going to be the thing when it comes to Zion. As we come off the screen here, that's going to be the thing as we talk about Zion is, okay, he has figured it out. Go be Giannis. But here's the thing with Giannis, as we've talked about, like there was a while there where I was wondering, does Giannis even have a secondary move? And at times it looked like he didn't even need a secondary move, but eventually he did. And we saw what happened. They got that championship where he went crazy, running off four straight against the Suns in the point fraud. Will Zion be able to do the same? Because he won't have the type of gifts that Giannis naturally has. He's not 6'10", 6'11", maybe even 7' foot like the Nigerian freak Giannis Antetokounmpo is. He's not that. He ain't growing. There's no more growth spurt in terms of height. He might grow wider, but he's not going to grow taller. So what are we going to get from Zion once he gets settled down? Now he's settled down at this skill set. He can bully ball his way to 20 plus. He can crash the glass. He can be dynamic running the floor. He's got bunnies still. What does that look like three years from now? And that's always been the rub with Zion. Like, all right, he can get a bucket. We've never questioned his ability to score. When I was making the argument of, you know, I would take Ja over Zion. My whole thing is this league is predicated for players like Ja to be max, to be able to maximize their, their potential sooner than a player like Zion. Ja's skill set is more predicated to winning games and winning games deep into May and potentially June more so than Zion's freakish athleticism, albeit at 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. That still rings the same to me. That doesn't ring hollow. That's still a thing to me. Josh's skill set is still going to ring out, and it's great that those two teams are one and two. It's great that the Grizz and the Pels, as of right now, as I'm recording this on Saturday morning, are ranked number one and number two in the West. And it's not necessarily because of those two guys, which is the funny thing about it. Like, it's not, it's not all the way about Ja in Memphis either. <laughs> It's damn sure not all about Zion and Nola. You have to look at CJ McCollum. We know, or at least y'all know who have been a podcast listener for a long time, but those that are on YouTube might not know. It is a thing when it comes to B.I., a.k.a. Young Reaper, and me and his podcast. So I am never just going to say it's all about Zion and Nola when you got B.I., Young Reaper, right there. And we saw how, how he gave it up on social media when they had the whole thing with the Suns from last weekend. We'll get there. But right now, I just want to lock in on what have you seen from Zion? Has Zion taken a step or is this always just the same Zion? Is this a refocused Zion? What type of Zion is this? Hit me up on the Elon app or if you're on YouTube, drop it in the comments. Let me know because this is something I want to have a discussion about it. I'm really intrigued because I've been watching the games and I'm like, okay, he's clearly healthy. He clearly still has the bunnies. He's got the first step. He's got the fast switch on the first jump and even the second jump. Okay, now, how does this game evolve? And it might not even have to evolve because, you know, Giannis's game didn't have to evolve. I don't know if they get that chip, if his game doesn't evolve, but he could have stayed right, right where he was, where he was a multiple-time MVP, defensive player of the year, all of that stuff. He could have stayed right there. It could have cruised to a Hall of Fame career. Now, with the fact that he's evolving his game, now you're talking about he could be the greatest whatever of all time at some point. He's now trying to get into those conversations. He could have put it on cruise control and just be a Hall of Famer. Now he's trying to get into that pantheon of, no, 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 no. I want to be one of them. I'm not just trying to be a regular Hall of Famer, especially with the basketball Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame, we know they put damn near anybody in there. But no, 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 I'm trying to be in those upper tier conversations. That's what evolving has allowed Giannis to do. Will Zion, one, want to do that? Two, be able to do that? And three, how will that look when, he, when and if he does do it? 